In this section, we are looking at the addition of systems of coplanar forces. And so to start off, let's say we have our typical x and y coordinate system. And now there's a diagonal force that's acting at an angle from the x-axis. And I'll denote that angle as theta and the force as f. And so when we're trying to analyze a force that's diagonal like this one, we need to resolve it into its x and y components which are also known as rectangular components. And these components can be found using the parallelogram law. So we can go ahead and write force F is equal to the force in the X plus the force in the Y. So looking at this visually, we see here that this is the X component of the force and this is the Y component. So F is just the sum of those components. And basically, whenever we're resolving this force into these components, we're just trying to represent the force in the x and y directions. And now here, we can simply form a right triangle by drawing a vertical dotted line. And we basically get a right triangle that looks like this. And so this hypotenuse is going to be F, knowing that F is the magnitude of the force, and the magnitude is also the length of the vector. And then the bottom length is simply fx. And so knowing that an angle theta is involved, we can go ahead and use trigonometry to find fx. So from the sketch, we know that fx is adjacent to the angle. So we can go ahead and use cosine, since cosine theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And solving for the adjacent, we get a equals h cosine theta. So again, the adjacent here is fx, and the hypotenuse is f. And so just substituting, this means that fx is f cosine theta, and that is the x component of the force. And now solving for fy, we know that fy is opposite to the angle theta. So in that case, we use sine, since sine theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And once again, the opposite is Fy, and the hypotenuse is F. So solving for O, we get H sine theta. And so in that case, Fy is F sine theta, and that is the Y component of the force. So now we have found both the X and Y components of the force F. And now we're going to be moving on to a second case for diagonal forces. So I'll just call this case 1, which deals with an angle theta. And now we have case 2. So again, let's say we have our x and y plane and a force F again. But this time, instead of an angle, we're given a triangle. This is what's called a small slope triangle which defines the direction of the force, just like an angle. Now I'm just going to redraw the x-axis, make it more straight. That way I can write the x component and the y component. And now how can we find these rectangular components using the slope triangle? Well, in order to do this, we're going to need to use proportions. Since the force F and the force Fx form a larger triangle. So we can go ahead and write fx over the hypotenuse, which in this case is f. And that will be equal to, using proportional length, the small length a, since it's along the x-axis, over the small hypotenuse c which is along the direction of F. And now solving for Fx. Fx will be equal to F times A over C, since we are simply multiplying the F to the other side. And so that right there is the X component of the force. And now for Fy, we essentially do the same. So Fy over F equals 
This time it's going to be B over C since B is along the Y direction. And again, multiplying the F to the other side, we get Fy equals F times B over C. And that right there is the Y component of the force. And so since the force is in the direction of both the positive y direction and the x direction, these will remain as positive. And that is also the case for the previous example. So all the components are positive. Now another quick refresher on proportions to maybe help you understand this better is the similar triangle case. Let's say this length over here is 5. And this one 3. And this bottom length is 4. And this larger one is x. If we want to find the value of x, we can go ahead and use the proportional lengths. I can go ahead and write big over small, which is big x over small x, considering an x and y coordinate system. And that is equal to the big y over small y. Again, considering this direction as y and this direction as x. So that'll be the large x length, which is just x, over the smaller x length, which is 4. And right here in the y, this is the big y, this is the small y. So that equals the big y, which is 5, over small y, which is 3. And now solving for x, we multiply the 4 to the other side, and we get x equals 20 over 3, which is about 6.67. So as you can see, this is what we did for the small slope triangle. So in this case, fx was the big x, and a was the small x, and fy was the big y, and b was the small y. And also the rectangular components which we found are considered to be in scalar notation. And that is the same deal for both cases. Now that you know how to write the rectangular components of a force in scalar notation, we can go ahead and introduce Cartesian vector notation. So again, let's say we have an X and Y plane. Under the Cartesian form, we use the directions i and j, which are basically unit vectors having a magnitude of 1. So the direction of j is in the y direction, and i is in the direction of x. And now again, since we're dealing with forces, let's go ahead and say that there's a diagonal force in this plane called f. Since this is a diagonal force, there's going to be the rectangular components. So this force will have an X component and a Y component. And once again, remember that I is simply equal to the X direction and J is equal to the Y direction. And now to write this force in Cartesian form. The force F is also equal to the X and Y components like before, but except we add in the I and J directions just like so. And so that right there is the force F represented in Cartesian form. And again, it's important to consider the sense of the force. And so from the sketch, we see that the force is in the positive direction, both X and Y. So this Cartesian form remains positive. Now let's go ahead and consider a different case. Here we have the X and Y plane. Let's say this time there is a downward diagonal force, just like so. This is our positive Y direction, our negative Y direction, our positive X and negative X. So as you can see from this drawing, the force is in the direction of positive X, but in the direction of negative X. So if we want to write the Cartesian form of this force F, it'll simply be Fx i hat. Again, this is i hat and this is j hat minus Fy j hat. 
So there you can see why it's important to take the direction of the force into account. And now I'm just adding in the components. You can clearly see here that FY points in the negative Y direction. Now let's say we have a system of coplanar forces like shown. And coplanar forces are pretty much forces that lie on the same plane. So for instance here they're all on the 2D X and Y plane. And now let's say we want to find the resultant of these coplanar forces. To start off I'm going to add in the positive and negative directions and the Cartesian components i and j. And now we can start off by defining F1. So here we break down F1 into its x component and its y component. So hence F1 will be equal to F1x i hat plus F1y j hat. And now moving on to F2. We now break down F2 into its X and Y components. So we'll have F2Y and F2X. And in this case, F2X is in the negative X direction. So F2 will equal negative F2X I hat plus positive F2Y J hat. And now for F3, we once again break down the force into its X and Y components. So F3X and F3Y. And so since F3X is in the positive direction, this is going to be F3X I hat. And since F3Y is in the negative Y direction, that'll be minus F3Y J hat. And so hence, the resultant force FR will be equal to the sum of F1, F2, and F3. So summing this up in Cartesian form, we get F1x plus negative F2x plus F3x and all of that in the i hat direction. And then plus the j hat portion, which is going to be F1y plus F2y plus negative F3y. And so we can just write the resultant force FR equals the results in the x plus the results in the y. So simply frx i hat plus fry j hat. And that is the resultant of the coplanar forces, which is in vector notation. And now if we wanted to write this in the scalar notation, it would be as follows. We would sum up the forces in the x direction, taking to the right as positive. So frx equals f1x plus negative f2x plus f3x. And then for the sum of forces in the y, taking up as positive, we get fry equals f1y plus f2y plus negative f3y. And so these are essentially the same results as the i and j components. And now it's a good idea to know how to represent the components of the resultant force symbolically. So the symbolic form for this is basically frx equals sigma fx. And here sigma just represents summation. So the resultant force in the x direction is simply the summation of the forces in the x direction. And now we can do the same for FRY. So that is capital sigma FY. And now to see the final magnitude of the resultant force of these X and Y resultant forces, we can go ahead and make a sketch of FR. And then add in the X and Y components of the resultant force. And then an angle theta. For direction. Now here we can form a right triangle between FRX and FR. And this is also FRY since it's just across from it. And so therefore the magnitude of FR we know is the square root of FRX squared 
plus fry squared. Since fr here is the hypotenuse. And this is just essentially using the Pythagorean theorem. So here's a more simple sketch of the right triangle. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Again, from the Pythagorean theorem. And now let's say we want to solve for the angle, which specifies the direction of the resultant force. We can simply apply trigonometry. Because as you can see from the sketch, we have a right triangle with an opposite side and an adjacent side. So we can simply use tangent in order to find theta, knowing that tangent theta equals opposite over adjacent, which in this case fry is on the opposite side and frx is on the adjacent side. So solving for theta, we get theta equals tangent inverse of fry over frx and hence that is the angle theta which is the direction of the resultant force.